what was interesting about this exhibition for me is it's the first time I have returned to a space. You know, my previous exhibition, Interlocutors, really highlighted this idea of return, using the idea of resurrection as something that situates a, a passage from one material state to another. My name is Rochelle Goldberg, and I'm currently in Vancouver. Psychomachia is an allegorical genre, typically from the late Middle Ages, that deals with the war of the souls. An elected figure is battling on behalf of the kingdom to return its soul to the state of its origin, which was thought of as the kingdom of love. The idea was to merge fraught and violent decisions, you know, with justice, love, and peace. And so I was attracted to the fact that one narrative was embedded within another. And I wanted to ask, do we still have this image that, you know, merges power with love? Mary of Egypt, her hagiography is more the psychomachia of the individual, not necessarily that of the kingdom. Bringing in these sort of medieval genres, I'm not trying to say that we live in medieval times, it's more that we're working with inherited structures. We need to be aware of a certain inheritance in order to responsibly deal with it. So I was drawn to Mary of Egypt and, and the composite Mary in general, because the message of Mary is a message of love. She's surviving, you know, on love alone in the desert with bread, cats, and water. And I wanted to sort of think about, is this, you know, famous nymphomaniac really the patron saint of penitence and, you know, the rejection of carnal flesh and desire? I think certainly not. You know, this is someone who has radical empathy towards herself and her landscape, and she wanted to reject a material world that couldn't adequately deal with her desires. And in doing so, her landscape starts to layer as her flesh. She becomes unrecognizable as human. So you have this merger of self and environment, so much so that, you know, in life she becomes a corpse, in death, she's immaculate. And so I thought as a kind of body to host a sculptural understanding, she's super interesting. In terms of my material procedure, I'm always working with vernaculars. And vernaculars, of course, can trace their signatures of inheritance. Yes, they also operate uh, allegorically, and, and this makes them shifty and unstable. The piece in particular, Friends Undone, Yes, we know that a fence provides barrier, right? That's the intention of, of a fence. But then in Fence Undone, uh, the fence is no longer in use. And I wanted to ask, and how can we consider this as a porous boundary? How can suddenly something that is, you know, meant to prevent passage can suddenly operate as a portal or a threshold? Now the fairy lights posit the boundary as elsewhere as mutable with the inclusion of the switch of course this is to agitate the idea that this can go either way the boundary is on or off in terms of thinking about mary of egypt's time in the desert we don't really know what happened we know that at some point a woman acting out a set of choices lived and died in the desert and i think it's more interesting to think about that as an entire process as opposed to an either or I had these bronze sculptures in the exhibition and they felt so far away. And the process of making them was incredibly intimate because I'm working with wax. My hand and everything around it is so implied on the surface. So the eyeshadow is really to bring back this kind of relatable, unknown surface and also just to push the corpse into a corpse that's pulsing with love and breathing and not not morbid. Vanity became a way to bring not just myself closer to them, but to bring them closer to us.